first of all, I think your analysis was very straight line. The street doesn't run in a straight line. Kid, you cannot tell your neighbor he is stealing ducks when you are stealing phones. As High Commissioner, I was wrong. As Charandas Prasad, I reacted naturally how any person would have. I did not come here for food for that kind of abuse. I did not come here for that kind of abuse. If you're going to go along that road, I'll walk off. But it's all okay once they're talking. If they were talking, I could not have been here today. You got ADHD. I got that. No, 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 calm down. I think I've done enough in terms of taking our team um, out of trouble from losing. Come on, Lord Taylor. You got, you got screwed. I'm reading the script now, and the first person that comes to my mind to play a detective, yes, but an erratic detective, Mickey Rodriguez. Why you not feel good supper in young? Why you man and supper woman? Look, you deal with that. You deal with that. We must encourage platforms like this because it brings together different people and allows for discussions. To, to take place in our country on a multiplicity of fundamental issues. Uh, KW, you apologizing for no, something no, 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 you no, think no. I did is wrong. I don't no, no. want you to do that and you should not have done that. Hello there, wherever you are along the world looking at this program. This is the Freddie Kisun Show with co-host Akash Prasad. Wherever you are, depending on the time of day or night, good evening, good night, good afternoon, good morning. Hello there, welcome once more to another edition of the Freddie Kisun Show with Akash Prasad. When the Colonials Rule Guyana, do you know that the sewage system was from north of Wigdam? That is because the colonials designed the sewage system to suit their purpose. Colonial officials didn't live south of Wigdam, so they provided facilities for the colonial administration. And that is one of the huge gargantuan accusations against colonialism, that they didn't develop the land, they didn't develop the country, they only developed what suited them. They only provided amenities and facilities for colonial people. The rest of the country was run down. Now, since the colonial officers and colonial Big wigs didn't live south of Wigdam. There was no need to provide sewage facilities for those people who lived south of Wigdam. So when the colonials left, there was only the natural beauty of the of third world countries, the flora, the fauna, but the infrastructure was not that handsome. That's because the colonials did not build beautiful infrastructural facilities. It was not on their agenda. One of the things that has attracted the people of this country because of its unique location is the Atlantic Ocean sits right next to Georgetown. The founder of the Star Book News, David Akeris, once said, and I don't know if it's true, I've asked people and they said, yes, it's true. He said, Guyana is the only country where the Atlantic Ocean touches uh, the road when you're driving. So you're driving on the seawall road, and there is the Atlantic Ocean next to you. Historically, that part of the Atlantic Ocean, which is called Evlery or Kingston, where the bandstand is, has always attracted people. I know that place, the back of my hand. That's because I, from 11 years, I've spent there. My father was a groundsman for St. Stanislaus Cricket Ground. And I would leave primary school. I would leave primary school and go there. So that place has attracted 
people from Guyana the past hundred or more years. But it has never been really developed by the colonials. It took the local government, the national government after colonial, colonialism left, to develop it. And today, in the 21st century, the Georgetown Seawall, from Ivlevi right down to Kingston, is a story of beauty. Here in our studio this evening to discuss that aspect of the beautification of Guyana and many more is the project director in the office of the First Lady. The beautification of the Georgetown Seawall was the brainchild of the First Lady. And here with us tonight is the man who is responsible for uh, coordinating, overseeing that beautification project. Our guest this evening is Rajan Singh, project director in the office of the First Lady of the Presidency of Guyana. Rajan, um, Ravin. Th Ravin, thanks for being here. I will leave you in the hands of Akash Prasad because I understand he was your cricket captain many, many moons ago. So over to um, Akash. Yeah, Ravin, it's so good to catch up back with you. I remember yes. Ravin coming to the Chronicle as a little kid uh, when I was working there. I was not um, so old back then anyway. And um, when we when we decided we were gonna form a cricket team, Ravin, of course, was, was on that team. We could have barely put together a team and a, and a, and a cricket team that played quite a bit of cricket um, challenged us to a game. Yeah. Freddy Kisun, we won that game by two runs. Do you know how much runs R Ravin Singh made? Two runs. It was yeah, the so most important. Yeah. But it's like the cricket arm. Um, it's like the cricket a uh, couple of years ago. Hetmeyer came into bat when they only needed a couple of runs. But because he hit, I think, two sixes, they gave him the man of the match. So he should have been given the man in the match. Yeah, um, but, but so it must have been the most important two runs in his life. But for, for our viewers, I want to show you a picture that we have here. Um, this is Mr. Raving Singh here at the bottom. He looked like, a, like he just out of nursery school. And that's me in the, in, with the yellow with your Jamaican shirt there. I was, um, I was captain of the team. And this was the winning team. This is the young man here that hold the glass. He is now the, the editor-in-chief of the Guyana Chronicle. And um, many, many wonderful people here, you know, um, in, in, this, in this photograph. It was the first time the Ghana Chronicle ventured out to play a game of cricket. And Ravin Singh contributed to well. He, he reminded me that, um, that somebody called him Butterfingers after the game, but I don't know why. Why, why did they call you Butterfingers? I think I, um, I misfield um, a couple of times. So, mm. yeah, the name stuck after that much. But Ravin, you've come a far way since then. I know you were in mm -hmm. Trinidad studying. You were, you know, you... And it's really a pleasure. It's really a pleasure to have you here today to talk about these things that has been happening in the country, mm -hmm. this beautification process. And um, I'm I'm very happy to see that uh, that uh, um, a young cricketer is sitting here today with, doing this interview with myself and then Mr. Kisun. But Mr. Kisun, a young cricketer that didn't make it <laughs> in the cricket world. Two runs, the a most important two runs in a his young life. Young cricketer, <laughs> <laughs> um, but um. You could be a great um, person in your mind. I'm sure he's a great cricketer in his mind. Oh, yes, but yes, he's yes. A, he's, a, he's a good administrator because look what he's given us. Now, when you, when you get older and you go deep in your career, you must look back and be proud of what um, you have done by the Sea Wall deal. It, 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 it's an attraction in Guyana. People all over have heard about this historic transformation of the George Tungsi Wall. I grew up on that place, and I could tell you the, the colonials really neglected it. Mm -hmm. um, in the 60s and 70s, they put some bench there. The bench for along was smelling stink, and people hardly went there because the um, homeless people, if you went there in the um, late 80s, homeless people took it over. I think the First Lady has left a legacy with this. Tell us, um, Ravin, how, um, how this thing started. Um, what, what was the shape 
of the initial thought about beautifying this this part of Guyana. Right. So first of all, Mr. Kisun and Mr. Pasa, thank you for having me. Um, it really is a pleasure and good evening or good day to your viewers. So the seawall beautification project or the Kingston Seawall Esplanade, as we now know it, uh, is part of a, a, a much wider project called the National Beautification Project. Um, I, I, I would pause to say that, first of all, I am privileged to work with a woman who I consider a visionary. And I don't say that because I am her employee or her staff. I say that because I, I've experienced firsthand uh, a keen interest and a genuine interest in improving the lives of the Guyanese people. She's an ordinary woman who has or had zero experience in politics. She was a public servant working at the Guyana Revenue Authority. She came into office not knowing what this life was about. And she's embarked on some remarkably ambitious project which directly impacts the lives of people in a positive way of course so the national beautification project is one of those projects um, it, there, there are several components to that project so it really relies on uh, scenic revitalization so for first lady you know she it 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 was necessary to create safe recreational spaces for families on one hand you have this enormous economic growth and, and so much happening in the, in the economy. And to balance that, of course, uh, you know, economic activities or an increase in economic activities, uh, you know, really, what should I say? It, it brings with it or ushers in, you know, a whole lot of challenges, and so what she really wanted to do was really to find that balance we are in as much as we were serious about what we were doing in the economy the social aspect of life was not neglected and so she met in 2020 after assuming office she met with carl i know you're familiar with carl mm -hmm. melville mm -hmm. um carl requested to meet with her because he was doing voluntary work yeah, at yeah. the seawall yeah. Right. So the very first meeting she had upon assuming office was to meet with Carl. And uh, we sat down, we listened to what his ideas were. And, you know, she felt this need to intervene um, and to really revitalize that space. Because, you know, it's a space that has always been buzzing with cultural activity, commercial activities. And so over time, that deteriorated significantly. You know, you had the environment was in a terrible state. You had, uh, you know, overgrown bushes. You know, it was it was harmful because you had, you know, snakes and so there. Um, you know, you had unregulated and illegal vending. So the area, you know, and as a result of that, you and overcrowding. Homeless area, people use it all the time for all the time. nature. All the I time. I know I can write a book about that place. Absolutely. And then you had an increase in criminal activities, pickpockets, you know, people being robbed there because there was poor security. Um, so, you know, she she really wanted to change that, you know, and to provide Guyanese, you know, with a, with a safe space where families could have, you know, gone out, um, enjoy a quiet just, afternoon. Just, just, mm -hmm. just, just a minute. Mm -hmm. You go at that place after 11, yeah. after 11 in the night, and you see among the people there, during the bad days, everybody left yes. at 7 o'clock in the night. Absolutely. Once you jog in and you walk in 7 o'clock, you're gone. Once it's get dark. Yeah, yeah. By here. Nobody there at 7 o'clock. Continue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she intervened, of course. Um, it, it took a while because it's, you know, it, was, it was no simple undertaking. That is a massive multi-million dollar project. Yeah, yeah we'll show our viewers. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, but of course... Um, that was done with support from the Ministry of Public Works, which, which was the executing agency. Um, and of course, well, today we have what we know as the Kingston Seawall Esplanade. Right. Let's let's for, for, well, for the before, viewers out before there. we mm -hmm. before we show before we show that, um, this is one of the the projects mm -hmm. 
-hmm. You will tell us about the other projects as yes. we go on. No right? problem. Yeah. But what I would like to know is how, from a failed cricketer, you came, <laughs> you came to... fingered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, from a failed cricketer mm -hmm. at, the, at the Chronicle, mm -hmm. how you reached so far? But, but while he was a failed cricketer also, I must say he was a brilliant journalist at the Chronicle. I can attest to that because mm -hmm. I worked there when he was there. And he was a brilliant journalist since back then. So cricket um, must have been his really love and passion. He's still young. He's still one. one young one. No, no, I don't have an interest in playing cricket interest. professionally. I want to go to the IPL. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. absolutely not. But this, CPL, CPL. Yes, you but but um, CPL, the Chronicle Premier League. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, he has to tell us. So, so when, when you went over to the first lady. So upon her uh, assuming office, yes, I um I took up that portfolio. But so where you were, you were still at the Chronicle when that happened? No, I wasn't. I was actually in um Jamaica. I was studying. So uh, I left the Chronicle. Uh, I worked as a journalist from 2014 to 2017. Um, I left the Chronicle in 2017, and uh, I attended school in Jamaica for three years. What 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 you did? I studied political leadership management and strategy, okay. which is a combination of um you know, policy and a little bit of business. You study and, political leadership? Of course. So you may be, um, <laughs> why you're not in politics? Oh, that is common. Let's see how it goes. Study political <laughs> leadership. So, um, so uh -huh. you like politics then? You're interested in politics? I have a keen interest in politics. I do. Okay. Um, when in, in 2017, when you mm -hmm. left, mm -hmm. was there any uneasiness at the Chronicle? Remember there was a change of government and... Sherrod Duncan was now your boss, and he went. He he was kicked out ignominiously from the Chronicle. I mean, there were challenges um, as 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 a journalist. I mean, I know this is not the focus of yeah yeah yeah. You right, know this, right. but um, there were challenges. I remember, you know, um, I had done a story. I think that that same year or the year prior on the parking meters, um, I had done an investigative piece, which, funny enough, went on to win an award in twenty seventeen for investigative journalism. I think I got second place for that story. But there was a pushback um, because my editor at that time did not want to publish the story. And I remember... Ooh, Nigel Williams? Yes, mm. it was. Um, I remember having to write to the board. I remember uh, Tabitha Sarabo Hali was on the board at that time. I think Ruel Johnson was on the board. And, you know, my story... I was on the board. Right, yes. as a staff rep. Mm -hmm. um, and my story was sitting there for about two weeks, you know, and I was asking every day, you know, why isn't this story being published? But it didn't paint the city council in a good light because uh, the story really highlighted that every parking meter ticket you purchase, you were losing a couple of dollars on it because you could not maximize the use of it. So you were losing a few dollars and, you know, over time that would have amounted to millions of dollars that consumer would lose that they're paying for, but they can't Let use. Let stop you. I know, mm -hmm. I know the purpose here. Right. Is to talk, but <laughs> these things mm -hmm. slide into history, yes. and people get, people are entitled to this knowledge of yes. the history of the. Now, if we didn't have you here, <laughs> we would not have known that mm -hmm. you became uneasy in your journalistic career at the Chronicle mm -hmm. after APNU AFC came into power. Mm -hmm. So go ahead. So <laughs> it, it was. Um, so it was lying there on the shelf. Yes, for, for in excess of two weeks, um, you know, and I became frustrated because I had put a lot of work into that story, um, you know, and, you know, there was not justifiable reason why the story was not being published. And so I reached out to the board, I emailed the board, um, and a few members responded, and, you know, they intervened, and, you know, they, they too were questioning why the story was not being published. And... You know, the story subsequently went, um, it was published, but, you know, not without some amount of resistance. Um, and then I departed for Jamaica. Actually, well, before I, I um, proceeded to, um, you know, embark on my academic journey, the story actually got second place for investigative piece, you know, at the GPA Awards. Um, I think it may have been 2016 because the same year I won Young Journalist of the Year. So, I mean, you know, I, there was some amount of pushback during that time. I remember the agreement I had with the editor at that time is that I would leave with the condition that I would still serve as a freelance reporter, even though I was studying abroad. Um, and occasionally I, I would write. And, you know, for one reason or the other, you know, he stopped publishing my stories. And, 
you know, he sent me a very strongly worded um, email. He doesn't know what more I want from him. I no longer work there. And, you know, and I hope you kept I, that. I, was, I, I, I do have records of it. And I remember Miss Halley, who is now an opposition MP. Um, she had taught me at UG as well. Uh, she responded to the email and she was uh, she said, I'm appalled at the level of unprofessionalism from Nigel Williams, that is, um, in response to a simple query from me, that is, mm -hmm. you know. So I, I, I made a decision then I was in Jamaica at that time. I made a decision that I would stop writing for the Chronicle because I can't be, you know, diverting my time from away from studies to, you know, produce stories that are not being published. It's, it's counterproductive for me. And so uh, around, I then did some freelancing work with Gordon Mosley. I did some, um, and then I started doing some freelance work with the newsroom up until early 2020, just after elections. Um, by then I had wrapped up studies. And so um, I had no political affiliation and offer came in because of my area of study. Um, I would ask, I was asked rather if, um, you know, I'd be willing to take up the position, you know, of managing the projects um, at the First Lady's office. And I, I, I accepted that offer. Do you, was, do you know, although this program is about Ghana's beautification <laughs> from the First Lady Youth Project Director, do you know how important that past five minutes have been? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're speaking about your experience at Chronicle mm -hmm. at a time when your ultimate boss mm -hmm. has just published his autobiography. Your ultimate boss would have been Moses Nagamutu. Mm -hmm. He was in charge of all. Yes. So that nonsense he wrote in his autobiography, I'm glad we have brought that out now. <laughs> that it's under him as minister. Mm -hmm. You couldn't publish what you... Anyway... Thanks for saying that these things after history. Let's mm -hmm. look at your work now mm -hmm. in another area. Let's show our viewers the project that you were in, you were in charge of and has been completed and Guyana finds very fascinating.
Good. That's um. That is your work right there on the screen. Um. How long? Let me let me let me stop you there. That's, it's not my work. I know. I know what I, work I know goes. what you mean, but I know I know what <laughs> yeah, I yeah, mean yeah. too. If Oversight you, means a lot. The intellect, the intellectual um, author of that work is the first lady. Absolutely. The Ministry of Work carried out it yes. but the project director had to be able to say no no man don't do that no 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 yeah, yeah. don't put that there no what are you doing <laughs> um so good work man good work i i, I um mm -hmm. unfortunately you've left journalism i hope mm -hmm. you haven't left it for good i mm -hmm. think teaching medicine and journalism mm -hmm. are the world's three best professions mm -hmm. um <laughs> journalism brings to people events people and places that the world need to know about and in the process knowledge is gained mm -hmm. uh, so you're proud of what we've just shown there absolutely of course i mean you know anybody w would be the, the average guyanese you know would be proud of what that space has become except for a few anti-developmentalists or the you know, it's a small... Leave, leave the oil in the ground. Yeah, yeah, well, leave the oil in the ground. Well, leave there, it. There's, a, there's another smaller group. Leave, leave us alone. Leave the oil in the ground. There's another smaller group, you know, that, know. That, that believes that, you know, this project, you know, should not have happened. There's a, there, there's a small group that exists on, on social media, you uh -huh. know. Absolutely. I'm not Ab on, no, I don't have Facebook, so I don't understand that. Yeah, there's... What's the, there's, what's the reason? Your argument is, you know, everything is now concrete and mm. you know um you know we're removing green, green spaces, spaces. a country that is, that is 87 percent green 86 yes, percent yes. green mm. you know but um you know what these people advance arguments conveniently um these people have these things on the facebook uh any yes, one of absolutely. them prominent educated people if they if it's on facebook <laughs> then it's public Mr. If they, uh, you know you, about this uh, cash yes i know no no if it's if it's if you go on facebook <laughs> and publish a thing saying Make have a ten thousand dollar Guyanese bill, or, or scrap all the notes and bring in coins. If you could put that on your Facebook, why can't we quote you? You 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 you're barefaced enough to say scrap all notes mm. and you put it on your Facebook and everybody's seeing it. Why? So, Freddie, recently we had a guest on the show and I, I can't remember exactly, but I spoke about it. Mm -hmm. I spoke about it that there was the green space between um, that they yeah, say yeah, yeah. right and uh, the, but Ravin is right there were 82 87 percent of this country is green space mm -hmm. but Ravin but 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 let him continue with people saying no oh, so we should have we should have left that thing like that it should have been left when, 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 when it rains all you, you can't go to the table and, and take your snack because it's mud absolutely that place was was it you know overgrown bushes you know there was no proper facility there was no facility to you there's no proper washroom or mm -hmm. sanitary facility mm -hmm. you know you didn't have proper benches for people to Come sit and that. have a meal look at what that space is now and still you have people you know educated people Mr. Kisun, i'm not even joking people who are pursuing their phd currently who are lecturers at the university of Vienna, who have voice very strong objections and to the beautification opposition. of the sea wall to the beautification of the sea wall and the current state that it's in and knowing mm -hmm. knowing knowing your background mm -hmm. and you don't you're not a political activist mm -hmm. you don't want to call names I will um, not. I will I not. I know you say, feel right. You know. Um, uh, <clears throat> I would like. You see mm -hmm. the thing about it. These people should be called out. You know, mm -hmm. they um. The anti-oil lobby paid over a million dollars for three advertisements saying we don't want oil. Oil is not our future. And nobody knew who 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 sponsored those advertisements. Nobody knew. Because they were ashamed. They were ashamed that hundreds of thousands of school children and young people were saying, you don't want oil? Mm -hmm. Oil income mm -hmm. is billing our schools. Yeah. Oil income mm -hmm. is billing 12 hospitals mm -hmm. in areas where people don't have access to yeah. help. Mm -hmm. So they didn't want to put their names. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. why I, I wanted you to call them out. <laughs> I grew up on that seawall. Mm -hmm. I know how terrible it was. And today, thousands, not hundreds, thousands every month. Yes. You should see them there. People bring their kids, their grandchildren, about mm -hmm. a family about 13 drive up in a minibus. Mm -hmm. 
and they're sitting down there, they bring their chicken, they were going to the play yeah. park. Play, play, mm-hmm. There's a play park there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll bring up the photograph later. That that area, that area, that entire area has CCTV cameras. That entire area that is monitored live. Right? In the police outpost and at the CID headquarters, the police headquarters. It has free Wi Fi. Those are millions of dollars that corporate sponsors chipped in. And then you have a handful of people who you know, believe you know, that it doesn't bring any benefit to I the people. You <laughs> I did 42 persons on the 13th of December 2022 in the Starbuck News. 42 persons said, sign a letter saying Guyana must get out of oil immediately. That's what the, the letter said in the Starbuck News. Mm-hmm. And then I did an investigating report. I have, I, I have my media, my journalistic background. I've been in media for 25 years. Right. I did, uh, uh, I investigated these people. You should see who are they. Very wealthy Guyanese yeah, they who have left Guyana yeah, a long time. Yeah. One of them is the co-owner of the Starbuck News, Isabella de Caris, that lives um, John Mayer, mm. the, the, the famous um, Guyanese uh, journalist who lives You say she's a wealthy woman. Mm. A lot of them are university lecturers who left here, mm-hmm. never gave UG a month of teaching. Mm-hmm. One of them is an author named Pauline Melville, who left there when she was five saying we must get rid of oil and Pauline Melville lived all her life in the UK that became which to not not see oil you know when you check those people on Facebook saying leave the sea wall like that check where their friends and families and relatives live you know? um, Robin before I ask my my first question to you there are there are two requests that I would like to make on this show and mm-hmm. uh, the first one is since I've known Mr. Kisun and since I've been and since I've been working on the show, I've always heard him say once he said he with bravado he can say that nobody knows the Georgetown Seawall more than him. He's been there since he's eleven years old. My request is Mr. Kisun should be made an honorary ambassador hmm. of that seawall. Well, you're asking me if I want No, no, I me asking you. <laughs> okay, I me, me asking you. So I'm I asking decline. him. You can decline. No, you can decline. I decline. But I'm telling you. Because of his, He's because too of his young knowledge. to know my history. Go on, my arm. Yeah, but all right. Let, let's come on. Yeah. Now, Ask the first question. lady, the first lady has. This project has really transformed these spaces, as you're rightly saying, mm-hmm. right? I know there is there is there's one that we show here. There is one over the river near Windsor Forest area. There, yeah, yes. yeah. right. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. When I drive past there, I'm seeing the amount of people. That's, east. Your, that's your work too? Yes, that's yeah, first yeah. lady. Yes. And yes. recently, yes. recently well, in March, and I took photographs there. in March, mm-hmm. I think two were opened in Burbis. Correct. Right? Raven, what else is on what else is on the card? And my second request will be I hope that we can am. Mm-hmm. Is on is in that list because you know me and Freddie guys, we have a very soft spot for that place. Yeah, I hope my wife has a roots there. Yeah, and, from there. Uh, yeah, so tell us what, what is next and what is in the works? What right. can we expect? So, as I said um, earlier, you know, these these individual projects are part of the much wider or much broader national beautification project. Um, and so one one component of the national beautification project is the development of, of safe recreational spaces. Um, so we've seen the Kingston Seawall Esplanade developed. Um, there is the Le Jealousy Recreational Park. Uh, two in Burbies, one at Lonsdale, one at Brothers. Um, currently, we have. I don't know where's Lonsdale and Brothers. Yeah. Honestly. Um, How far? Quarantine. Oh, okay. Yeah, in quarantine. Do you know Lonsdale mm-hmm. and Brothers? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, we're currently working on two others, uh, one at Tushen in Region 3. Yeah, um, yeah. That's near to Puika. That has a. Uh, right. Tushen has a large. Oh, absolutely right, right. absolutely so so that was one of the one, one of the considerations uh you know where you have like a large concentration of people but there are no you know recreational spaces for them or their families um and then we're doing another one um, in diamond grove so we have a, a huge piece of land here that is um currently not occupied so we we're going to develop that space uh, we received some support from the korean government um, some of these parks, so what you'll find, uh, not just recreational facilities, you'll find multi-purpose buildings. Um, so, for instance, you'll we'll have a multi-purpose building at Tushen and at the Diamond Grove Park. What those, the purpose of those buildings 
will be to facilitate things like skills training, skills development training um, for therapy uh, for uh, children and adults who, who may need it. Um, they're going to be the buildings are going to be outfitted with like a small library and a, con a, a computer room. So, you know, children can go do their schoolwork. So it's not just providing just a, a recreational space, but, you know, it's it's, you know, the holistic welfare of people and the community. Uh, importantly, too, uh, is the fact that we allow these communities to manage their projects. So when we commission them, you know, sustainability is always an important consideration for us. Um, you know, how do you ensure once you commission these projects, you know, that they're properly maintained? So what we, we usually propose is a management committee comprising people who live in those communities. And so, you know, they're it's either voluntarily or they're elected. And so they manage those spaces. They, they design uh, activities which can generate revenue and it helps to maintain those parks. You didn't mention anything in Amsterdam. For Barbies, New Amsterdam would be more populated. Yes, actually, in actually, uh, we launched a, a park in New Amsterdam um, last year, I think. Yes. Was oh, it so the New Amsterdam? I should have, I should have asked you to bring your. Um, I should have asked you to bring your 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 um, videos of. of of those things for our viewers to see. Oh yes, we'll because, invite um, him again. Mm -hmm. Because we are, oh, oh, oh. We, yeah. remember we have a lot of diaspora um, visitors, right. uh, viewers of the program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that thing at Lamaha Street opposite the hospital, mm -hmm. that, and then it goes right down to um, up over the St. John Road. So that's part of your thing? No, that isn't part of the First Lady's office. That is directly from Office of the President. Um, I think the intention um, is really to have uh, an art gallery, food court, that sort of thing. Yeah. By that space, by mm -hmm. the they want to create, they want to make it into a museum, right. like a like a walk-in museum. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Robin, mm -hmm. let me tell you of an experience that I have, and 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 a few years ago, my fiance who lives in Canada, she was here, and I decided to take her to Burbies because she's never seen Burbies really, mm -hmm. and. We stopped just over the bridge at Palmyra mm -hmm. to use what was those washroom facilities there. Mm -hmm. Ravin Singh, you would not believe what was in that washroom. First of all, it, 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 it broke, it, everything is broken up. But I'm telling you, in each one of those little washroom things there, mm -hmm. that have one million and one marabonte in there. Mm -hmm. Terrible, terrible. You know, you mm -hmm. when you're when you're in another country, you travel a lot. You know, their their washroom facilities are. Are you catering? For, are you catering for these things, um, Ravin? Yeah. Two months after his project, the uh -huh. city project, the faucet as it was broken. Mm -hmm. Carl and I went to fix it, and let me tell you what happened. I asked a policeman. Mm -hmm. I went into my car, got screwdriver and everything. And so we, you know, I asked a policeman to help us, help me in car, mm. because the faucets were broken and all. He said, I'm not a plumber. Wow. He said, I'm not. They broke the faucet mm. two months after. So two, so two questions here. Yeah, yeah. Are you, are you pre preparing? Are you catering for these type of services? And how do we then protect and police this? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's difficult to regulate and monitor. Um, you know, they're, you're dealing with large volumes of people. You have thousands of people at the sea wall, thousands of people in these parks. You know, the most we can do is encourage and implore people to take mm. care of these facilities because it's for them. Mm. You know, um, you know, it, it may sound a little graphic, but a week after we commission a project, the washroom, about 30 feet away from the washroom, there's a guy standing there urinating on the fence on the picket fence and the washroom is 30 feet away. And I'm standing there, I'm looking at him. I'm like, young man, the washroom is right there. Um, you know, he, he just didn't budge, you know, but that's the, that's the kind of mentality you have to get people out of. You have to, you know, people need to understand that, you know, this is theirs. That seawall belongs to them, the people of Guyana. That's why that project was, you know, was commissioned so that they can benefit from it. And once they take ownership of it, then you learn to value it, you know. Um, but yeah, as, as it is, you know, there's, there is no form of, uh, enforcement rather than you know if you file a complaint with the police for maybe things like vandalism 
you know, indecent exposure, that sort of thing. But, you know, the most we can do is, you know, implore people. But there are facilities. There are facilities. Coming back to your question, Akash, um, for instance, as I, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, you know, there is a sustainability plan for uh, most, if not all, of what we do. So even for the washroom, um, we haven't instituted it as yet, but we will eventually, we will ask for a small donation mm -hmm. um, to help with maintenance of the washroom. So as it is, we're using the part-time workers who are on the government part-time program. Uh, we're using the workers to help maintain the area. But of course, you know, we still, we provide supplies at no cost to people. So you go in the washroom, you know, it's always clean. They clean periodically, maybe every 15, 20 minutes. So we have to buy supplies, toilet paper, you know, disinfectant, you know, air fresheners, that sort of thing, which is relatively costly because of the amount of people who use the facility. Yeah, the so, Sunday, so, it's, yeah. Sunday, it's over packed. So, you know, we, we will ask for a nominal fee. Mm. Um, you Makes know, sense it's not a, a revenue generating activity it's not to make a profit it's really just to help to you maintenance know costs. absolutely with maintenance we go there and eat quite often but i see now a toddler a building is going up uh -huh. with three levels up what is that about? So this is actually one level but i think the the top is storage oh, oh, oh um okay, yeah okay. but but that'll be also for um for some the commercial venue okay mm -hmm. okay um, what else is up in the future? Well, I mean, it, for the beautification project, that's uh, what we're working on now. The the part at Tushen, we're working on the one we're working on the one at Diamond. Um, additionally, um, of course, we face you know a lot of constraints. One of the the, the biggest constraint that the the first lady his office face is the um, resource constraint. You know, First Lady's office is by and large a ceremonial office. You know, so in terms of technical capacity and finance, we, we're really restrained in, in what we were able to do, restricted, you know, to a great extent. We don't have a budget that is comparable to any ministry, yet we undertake projects of the magnitude of ministries. Mm -hmm. For instance, I'll I'll share the, the period poverty project, the menstrual hygiene initiative to provide sanitary pads to young schoolgirls uh, at the secondary level alone costs us 60 million Ghana dollars a year 60 million dollars the annual budget of the first lady's office is 30 million a year so just one activity doubles it, it right. double just one activity mm -hmm. right um you know so it it just goes to show you as as i said at the beginning um of our discussion i work with a visionary I work with a woman who thinks big, you know, who's who's passionate, she's ambitious, um, you know, and you can see it from the magnitude of her projects and and the kind of uh, impact that those projects create. Um, so another thing we wanted to do under the National Beautification Project to roll out is um, some welcome signs to each of the administrative regions. Right, so um, we want to do this very nice sign welcoming people. So, so as you enter regions, you don't have these billboards. You know, you mm -hmm. got a billboard, East Barbies quarantine. Mm -hmm. and yeah, we wanted to do very nice signs so that as you as you move from one region into the other, you know, there's a nice welcome sign there saying, "Welcome to, you know, Region Five, Damaram Haiko, or Region Six. Or I, I'm I'm a little bit despondent when I heard what you have just said because mm -hmm. if if with her vision mm -hmm. and what she has done there, mm -hmm. if she has a good budget, mm -hmm. she can do really phenomenal Ab things. Absolutely. She could take over some of the nonsense that the city council have neglected. <laughs> you know, we have a we have a burial ground mm -hmm. with um, Dutch tombs that have just gone to waste. Mm -hmm. Yes. Gone yes. to waste. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. our history. Many historical sites. Um, Rajin, I took our, Robin. Robin, I took our operator to mm -hmm. show where a, 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 a heritage site that mm -hmm. is over 150 years old, mm -hmm. the Fort Grand Sea Right behind your project there right. on the seawall. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 the jetty has been, the people, um, the people bring in um, riprap boulders, mm -hmm. just throw it on the um, jetty broke and broke it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Broke it up. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. No, those things should be preserved. That the, the Dutch built that fort. It yeah. was called Fort Guayu. Right. And they just allowed it to be. It just. <laughs> Robin, that brings me to a very serious question that I got, I, I got serious issues with. And that is, I just got Georgetown, I'm sorry to say this, Freddie, you know, I just got George, Georgetown mm -hmm. Garbage City. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, you have all of these beautiful spaces. Mm -hmm. The Georgetown, um, look, at, look, look, at what, look at how the space has been transformed mm -hmm. at, from, for, at Kingston there. But then you have people. Then you have people. Mm -hmm. Then you a little farther from there, you're going up, going up to to, to Kitty. Yeah. Ravin, you must have seen the garbage mm -hmm. there. Now, obviously, you have put something in place to, to help curb the situation there. How can mm -hmm. we then? How what can we do? Because we have a we have a countrywide problem. Yeah. So so. I as I said, um, the National Beautification Project has several components. So developing parks is just one aspect of it. Another aspect has to do with solid waste management, mm -hmm. right? Intrusion of, of solid waste on, you know, open spaces. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we've been working with the Ministry of Local Government on this, um, you know, to start a, a solid waste campaign, uh, solid waste management campaign, that is to, you know, deter illegal dumping and and how do we you know address the the issue of solid waste management not just in the city but beyond in other regions as well um i think last year uh it may have been last year that uh the minister of local government spoke about the uh, solid waste management mm -hmm. authorities bill so i think with that coming into play um you know it will it will provide greater levels of enforcement um and uh, you know, we whatever small role the office of the first lady can play, um, you know, we're willing to. But as as I said before, you know, we're really restraining our ability to do, you know, so much. We don't even have a budget to, you know, launch a campaign. We'd be willing to. We would develop one, you know. But we really have to rely on other agencies, other ministries, you know, the private sector to really uh, buy into what we do and help to support us financially to get a lot of the work done. So you had thirty million from this budget, just gone. Yes, from twenty yeah, twenty twenty four. I hope you get. Um, I hope you get much more than that the next budget because I I don't I I go to that sea wall every day and I yeah. tell you people yeah. just are flocking to that place. Yeah. You um, we do call in. Uh, calling show from 9 30 to 10 yeah. and sometimes when we finish i would pass there and half past 10 um 10 years ago you could find nobody there with seven as i just said mm -hmm. so i hope she gets uh, um uh, i hope she gets a bigger budget because there's so much to do this is um eight to three thousand square miles you know with 10 <laughs> regions right. of course of course and uh, um region four people dominate this country yeah mm -hmm. Robin, Robin just Robin, mentioned Region Four. We need to spread this thing yeah. beyond Region Four, yeah. man. Yeah, definitely. But Robin just mentioned that one project, which was which is not even in the beautification uh, pr part of that beautification project. That one thing alone, providing sanitary napkins to just secondary school girls, cost sixty million, which is double our annual budget. Uh, the annual budget, sixty. So imagine you got that to the, and then you have all of these things. You have a tough task. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is challenging, but um, you know, for City, uh, you know, she gets the support because, you know, people see her vision, they subscribe to them, you know, and pe people are seeing tangible outcomes. But one of the <laughs> one of the areas that people are flocking to is the park at the Sea Wall. We have a photograph of the park. Yes, yes, we have we have a, have a couple of pictures here of the. Yeah, um... Let's let's show our viewers the park. People are taking their children there. Yeah. Uh, it's a kind of grass that you have to take off your shoes when you. you yeah, yeah, it's a it's a, yeah, it's, it's a matin, it's a turf like, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a turf, yeah. So that's um that's one of the pictures we have. This these are children playing here. And look at these two cuties enjoying their moment. Who's a little who, this this little boy look looks that's knowing? Perfect, that's your child, right? <laughs> that's a for that's a that's a for a son. <laughs> that's a for a son, yes. <laughs> that's the um the president's little boy. Yes, yes. Oh my, I can't see. I yeah. can't recognize him. He's growing. Yes. That's the first son. Um, Ravin, what's the 
what's the big plan? What, what, what next? What, what do you? I'm sure you have a five-year, ten-year plan. What can we expect? We have any photographs of um, first lady in action doing things? I, I'll get one while Robin answer this question. Yeah. Um. I mean, the objective, you know, is I don't know, the, the the goal really is to work toward, regardless of what we do at the office of the first lady, it's to ensure that whatever Where's is the done, office for our viewers, Where's state house. Oh, office, state house. Yes, it's based at state house. Um, you know, whatever we do, it's it's always with the Guyanese people in mind. You know, how do we ensure people benefit from what we do? And you know, one of the greatest feats feeling of satisfaction I get Mr. Kisun is when you sit on that seawall and, and you see children playing and you know enjoying themselves brings you a great level of satisfaction and comfort to know that you know you are part of this you know because people need this you know apart from all the seriousness that's happening in the country in oil and gas and people working at People need social and recreational activity. It adds value to your life. It helps. It's a huge your life. part of um, absolutely your psychological. Event. Why absolutely. do you think outside the outside world, people treat mm -hmm. their leave, mm -hmm. people treat their vacation as if it's a family yes. matter? Of course. They just can't wait to take their vacation mm -hmm. in um, mm -hmm. Mexico mm -hmm. or Egypt mm -hmm. or Gold Coast. Or, Americans are just crazy to see Venice. Right. Yes. You know. Mm -hmm. So this this photograph is one that was um it's this was in this was one of the recently commissioned um parks in parks in Burbies, right at yeah. Brothers. Mm -hmm. So this is that's the first lady there with the, with that little boy and um this, so this is that guy on the right is um Ravin. No, 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 no Ravin is not there. No, no, yeah, no, that's no. one of the okay. ministry's um staff. Yeah. Thank you, operator. And and we also I should mention it's it slipped me. There's so much happening in what we do, you know, to recollect everything at the same time is is, is always a challenge. But um she's also um re not even rehabilitating because it, it I d I don't think you could rehabilitate that. She's she's um developing a children's park in a national park. Oh, I saw, I saw them building it there. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I saw um, it's going on there yeah, right now. Absolutely. So, oh, so the entrance is from Carafesta. Car yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, that's her work. That's her work, and and I, I see it going on there now. Oh, there's God. a there's a um she's adding a new feature to it. Um, Guyana's never had it before. A splash pad. So the splash pad is uh you know uh in the U.S. and the developed world during the summer they have these um facilities play parks that um uh, with these fountains and with so on fountains and mm -hmm. uh you have various elements that are spring water the children can go and play mm -hmm. so that park is going to feature that right the one in in mm -hmm. the national park but okay. but it's 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 a it's a technical project because obviously you're dealing with water so you know it has to have a filtration system um, you know, that's our thing, but a splash pad is going to be installed. I see children. that thing every time yeah, in the but park. That's, a, that's mm. another massive up project. Up to this here. morning, and mm -hmm. I didn't know that was a, because there's no sign saying, right. saying that. But. So, so that's going to be commissioned in, in a few months, by the second quarter of this year. Um, that's going to be commissioned as well. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. I see, I see this thing, and I said, what the hell is going on yeah, yeah. up here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, what about the other regions? Right, so the plan really is to develop at least one, a minimum of one recreational park in each administrative region, right? So we've covered region three, about four regions we've covered so, got so far. More. Right, so we got we got about six more. And don't um, forget Wickenham. Right? <laughs> Wickenham comes out of region three. I know, no, but, but yeah, we're um, gonna... We need to provide those facilities to our native people. Mm -hmm. yeah, of Amazon. course, so every yeah, region, yeah. region one, you know, a minimum of one park in every region. Can we show our viewers again what, uh, uh, just so of, uh, we're running out of time, just a short clip of what First Lady and Ravin has done? In case people joined us late.
you do, we develop in this country. All other countries have that, and some people are saying, leave that thing, leave that thing in class. Of so you, when we have the rainy season three times a year, the rainy season three times a year, right? Well, right now there is no season anymore. Right. Rain well, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming in. Um, so um, you leave it like that. Unimaginable. And do you know, maybe all the countries in the world, you've been to Jamaica? Jamaica, as Jamaica. Bob Marley, you visit the Bob Marley Park? I have. Yeah. Yeah. So um, other countries don't have what we have? These are you people know? with limited experience, Mr. Kisun. Very limited experience. And, and I think and, they also have anti-government no, no, instinct. They, they do yeah, have yeah, anti-government no. instinct. It, it, sometimes yeah. all it is, these very people, they're just looking for something to jump on. Mm -hmm. yeah, looking yeah. For something it's jump. publicity. Yeah. Yeah. Whether, whether yeah. it makes sense or not. It's publicity. I'm telling you, a lot of these people enjoy that kind of sea wall we have built mm -hmm. outside. Absolutely. They, have, they, they, yeah, yeah. they, they enjoy that. Come back and boast about and they, li and they live in mm -hmm. New York where there's no space to air. The whole place is high rise. Mm -hmm. those, those, those buildings that are 200 levels, they block the arm, mm -hmm. <laughs> they block the breeze. And they live, they live in those countries and they have children that are American citizens in those countries. <laughs> You find out when it, um, you miss them when they're not in Guyana. They're in New York. Mm. <laughs> they're in New York, a concrete jungle. All you see is high rise. You know, but, but, but Robin, um, it was nice to really, really, um, our time is going, but we have a, a couple of minutes more. What is it that, um, what is it that you keenly interested in? in the coming year and you know, from your office? Well, for now, we, we because of our limitations in terms of staffing, First Lady has a staff of four, well, one of whom is a photographer, wow. right? So her staffing complement is not even the size of a department. Right, so I Ms. don't know why these so people bother Kisun. with criticism. You should <laughs> so, get the staff, so, so, you get the budget. So Mr. Gonna, Kisun, people gonna always gonna criticize. <laughs> so Mr. Kisun, you can you can understand and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Akash, you can understand the kind of li limitation and 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 you know restrictions we, we work with. You know, staffing capacity is severely limited. You know, financing you know capacity and ability is you know limited. Um, you know, but yet, you know, these projects are grand. These are massive, massive projects that um, she's undertaken. So, you know, we, we don't stretch ourselves very thin because we, we don't, one of the things we don't want to do is pander to people. You don't want to hop on a cause just because you think, you know, it, it makes for good publicity or, you know, you think that's what people want. You want to do things or, or align it with where your interests are. And that, that's, those projects are where First Lady's interest is. And, and that's why, you know, she dedicates so much of her time to it. That's why these, these projects are of a unique nature. National Beautification Project, that's something that should have fallen under the Ministry of Public Works. But yet the First Lady of this country took it on. You know, Ministry of Health should have been dealing with adolescent health, you know, menstrual hygiene. Mm -hmm. But she took that on because that's something she's passionate about. So, um, and then there's the Adopt an Orphanage initiative i'm not sure if you're familiar with that so the Ad adopt an orphanage initiative was birthed in 2021 so first lady um after having met with a few representatives from a couple of orphanages most if not all of them registered the same concern which is you know while a lot of people and companies donate food you know and there's not a great challenge with that um you know they're utilities and other expenses they do experience challenges with those uh, covering those expenses on a monthly basis so first they developed this idea to have corporate Ghana sponsor an orphanage so what she's done is establish a direct link between companies and these orphanages and so what these companies do is they take care of some of the overhead expenses of these orphanages on a monthly basis so for instance, a company will sponsor Orphanage X for a minimum of six months to a year. And so they'll take care of utilities, probably their water bill, electricity. Yeah, so you have some rich 
families and companies. Right. So can't so count the money they make. Right. right. So so she has successfully um, you know negotiated that deal for those orphanages. In the first phase in 2021, when we launched the end of 2021, eight orphanages were adopted by corporate sponsors. Uh, the second phase, 11 orphanages were adopted. And these orphanages, those expenses are taken care of. So we, we collect the budgets from these orphanages. We ask them to submit the budget, their, their monthly um, expenses. And then we provide those to these companies. And those companies take care of it. So we don't, the comp they, these companies don't give us the money. We have nothing to do with the, right, with right, the money. Do, right. right, so they deal directly with the orphanages. But apart from the financial support, um, you know, Sayo social support is also provided to to these children, you know, social activities. So, for instance, only yesterday, First Lady took 300 children from uh, orphanages and uh, from special needs education schools to the circus. Uh, she partnered with the Mexican ambassador and they took the children there. Uh, you know, they were able to enjoy the show. You know, they bought snacks for them. Um, last month, she hosted a kite flying and egg hunt activity, uh, yeah, Easter egg hunt activity for children from these orphanages too. So it's not just about just providing, um, you know, financial support to them, but you know that social aspect, you know, ensuring that they're able to enjoy and participate in activities that you know ordinary children, you know, are able to participate in is is very very important for her. You know, she also has plans of. Um, visiting these homes very soon, um, you know, taking um, some small companies, you know, to do grooming for them, you know, cut their hairs, mm -hmm. um, you know, cut their nails, you know, talk to them, engage them one on one. She also has a counseling program for them in place. She funds that directly. Um, you know, we we've engaged persons from the disability council. So her projects are, you know, so in integrated and well thought out. So rather than hiring ordinary counselors she's she hired counselors from the disability commission so that way she's providing you know them with economic empowerment persons with disability which is another focus of her to counsel some of these children in the orphanages so it's a win-win mm -hmm. you know you're providing support to persons with disabilities who in turn are offering counseling and guidance services to these orphanages yeah. i'm glad we had you here um it's a uh... It was very interesting. I, I, a lot of what you said to me, mm -hmm. I don't think the average guy needs no. I don't think that I go in the park every morning. I was there this morning, mm -hmm. and I don't think I knew mm -hmm. that that uh, renovation mm -hmm. of the children um, playground was first lady. I, 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 I think she's she's uh, doing quite a lot of quite a lot of positive things, and it's unfortunate that. Well, you can always have the detractor. So yeah, of course. before we go, is there anything you would like to say? Um, not, not really. Um, of course, I, 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 you know, have to thank you both, uh, gentlemen, for the opportunity to be here and, you know, just share some of the work that, you know, the Office of the First Lady has been engaged in. Um, and naturally, you know, we will, you know, just make a request to the Guyanese people using your platform, of course, to... You know, just, you know, these facilities that are being provided to you, these projects that are being commissioned, you know, it's for you, the people of Ghana. And so, you know, we want to encourage you to, you know, maximize its use, but do so responsibly um, and understand that you have a role, um, you know, to preserve and protect what is rightfully yours. One last thing before we go, mm -hmm. Robin. Um, I started, when we started this, 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 um, this conversation, mm -hmm. I showed a clip of you um, when we won that game. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Kizun said, uh, a failed cricketer who has done wonderful <laughs> things. But let's say you were still a cricketer. The IPL is going on right now. Which team you'd be playing for? And what would you have been doing? What would you have liked to do? I, I've, I've, I've been back in the Calcutta tonight, right? Mm -hmm. You know, since, since I, I started following um, IPL years, years ago. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's the only team. I, and as a, play, as, as a player, team. what would you be doing? Oh, boy, I don't even know. <laughs> that's <laughs> a good question. <laughs> Well, you failed in um, you failed in cricket, <laughs> but you excelled in beautification. Yeah. Uh, our guest this evening was Ravin Singh, project director in the First Lady's office and in charge of the National Beautification Program uh, in 
and around Guyana in the 10 regions of Guyana. Thanks for being with us. We will see you on our next episode. On behalf of Mr. Rajan Singh and my co-host Akash Prasad, catch you later. Bye-bye.